All right, we need to talk about the Fallout TV show that launched on the evening of April 10th, 2024. I've already binged all eight episodes. I rolled credits on the final episode last night, and I just wanted to let all of it marinate in my head so that I could wake up and, and really say how I feel about it. And I've got to say, this show far surpassed my expectations in terms of quality and what I thought this was going to be. I remember watching the announcement trailer for this and feeling 50-50 on it. And I know Jonathan Nolan's involved, but even so, you know, I was wondering if they were just going to get Fallout and whether it was something that was adaptable to a TV show format. I mean, there's a lot of source material there to work with, but how were they going to utilize it? And uh, just was this going to be a good adaptation? And I can say very happily that, yes, it's actually among the best video game adaptations. The first thing that stood out to me about the show was how well it captures the essence of Fallout. When you think of Fallout, it is a very specific flavor of post-apocalypse, and I was just worried that that wouldn't translate or that the showrunners just wouldn't be able to capture just how we feel when we play the games, but it's all there. The vibes of Fallout, the atmosphere, the personality, the identity, all of it is just fully intact, and it immediately exudes that the second you start watching the show. It's got those grim and eerie elements that Fallout is known for, but it's also very comical and satirical. It can be colorful and absurd, and at times, oftentimes, it can be very violent and really messed up. And it's like the combination of all of these elements that makes Fallout what it is. And a big part of it comes down to nailing the aesthetic of Fallout. And the show really does do that from the environments to the set pieces, the props, the costumes, the character design, the monsters and creatures, the weapons, and just the overall color palette. There's so many occasions in this show where fans of the series especially will be Leo DiCaprio pointing at the screen, recognizing all of the different elements that are identical to the game, whether it's, you know, the, the specific vintage designs of aspects of the past and the present and the future and uh, its own sort of vintage sci-fi blend that the technology of this particular universe goes for. You've got all those familiar satirical brands and objects and logos that are just so iconic to the Fallout lore. All that stuff's there. Even the action sequences feel like they could be taken straight out of the Fallout games as violent and ridiculous as you see them in the games. You can definitely tell that the bloody mess perk is working overtime here, especially with certain characters. It is hyper-violent in a way that those who play the games will be very familiar with, and the show as a whole is can get pretty gnarly. I personally am glad that they didn't overly sanitize the TV show and try to go for mass appeal. They really made it an R-rated show. And it's a good-looking show overall. There's just great special effects across the board, great cinematography. It is just an aesthetically pleasing show. Fallout is, I think, an ambitious world to take on in live action because of just the special effects and uh, the set pieces that'd be required to bring it to life. But they really went all out on this. And I think that the special effects overall really shined with my only complaint being that the makeup on the ghouls can just look a bit fake. Like it, it just doesn't look like decayed flesh. It's pretty good prosthetic makeup, but you can still tell it's prosthetic makeup that might take you out a little bit, but I got over that pretty quickly. It's a minor nitpick. And then a big part of the Fallout aesthetic isn't just what you see, but also what you hear. It's about the music. It's about the sound effects that are so specific to Fallout. And all of that is in this show as well. I feel like the showrunners just really did their homework. Now, having the show look and feel like Fallout is all well and good, but without a great story and some compelling characters to back it all up, all of that wouldn't mean much, but I'm happy to report that the story of this Fallout TV show is actually quite good. It follows three main protagonists. You got Lucy, who's the vault dweller, Maximus, who's a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, and the ghoul, who is this mercenary slash gunslinger. I think from the outset, the show does a great job of introducing all three characters and making them all stand out and shine in a unique way. So you got Lucy, who is this naive goody two-shoes who's completely ignorant about the world outside from the one that she was boxed in from the world of the vaults. And it's interesting to see her be sort of this fish out of water 
uh, in this awful, terrible, gnarly, merciless world. You got Maximus, who is this young recruit who idolizes the Brotherhood of Steel and wishes to rise through the ranks to serve. And then the ghoul, he's kind of a more mysterious entity with a mysterious past and a bit of a wild card. You don't quite know what the ghoul's agenda is, but that slowly unravels as the layers of his backstory are peeled back, and that makes the ghoul consistently compelling despite how much of a dick he is. So yeah, these characters have very different origin stories, but the way their journeys are weaved together, I think, is done in a way that for the most part feels organic. There are a few instances where I felt like the way they run into each other feels a bit too coincidental, but generally the way they linked these very different seeming stories into something that comes together, especially at the very end, it culminated in what I thought was a really well thought out storyline and among the better Fallout campaigns, if you will. One of the neat things about the TV show format is that you can break away from the perspective of the main character or the player character and tell other stories as well that are not stuck to exactly what the main characters are perceiving. And so alongside the stuff going on on the surface with Lucy, with Maximus and the ghoul, you've got this whole vault storyline that runs parallel to the stuff happening on the surface that is all tied together as well. And the balance of all of these different elements going on is, I think, done really adeptly. And the way these elements slowly start to connect offers a lot of intrigue. There's a lot of intrigue that's already set up sort of at the beginning. But as the plot slowly unravels and as the uh, more conspiratorial and overarching plot elements and conflicts are revealed, uh, it, it really does come into its own as a very Fallout campaign feeling experience. You can tell that the showrunners and the writers definitely did study the Fallout lore and found interesting ways to kind of weave that into what is their own unique story. They do take some liberties with the lore and this is ultimately their own story that they're trying to tell within this universe. But overall, it's pretty true to what the Fallout lore is at its essence, what it's trying to say and what it's trying to express. There's just an authenticity to Fallout that is exuded not just through the aesthetic but also through the narrative. And also what you can do with the TV show format is not only tell stories from all of these different uh, parts of the world, whether it's the surface or the vaults, but also you can shift between the past and the present. And the show sort of constantly goes back to the past and gives you some flashbacks that tie into the main narrative. So all of that stuff is juggled really well. And these are plot devices that are used effectively to kind of slowly unravel the onion that is this relatively layered plot. The Fallout show also does capture the aspect of Fallout games where as you're treading along the main campaign, there are, you know, side quests like distractions along the way. In fact, this aspect of the games is directly referenced in the show as a wink and a nod via a quote. One of the characters says, the Wasteland's got its own golden rule. Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time true words cannot have been spoken. This is a very self-aware show as well. Like it understands what the source material is. And so they make it a point to include like a lot of Easter eggs and self-referential and meta elements. The show also understands that there are certain iconic aspects of the games that kind of need to be in the show. And so they find a really good way to include those elements in a way that feels seamless. There is sort of fan service in the show in the sense of like there are so many recognizable elements from the games, but it all feels woven in a way that isn't too overbearing or too like in your face. Uh, it feels woven into the narrative like in a way that makes sense. And at the same time, because the show is sort of satirical in its own right, there are certain things that it can get away with as far as, you know, being pretty meta and calling out to the games themselves. So it, it all makes sense in terms of how it fits with the tone of Fallout and, and its universe. The show also understands that the Fallout universe is full of just extravagant and unique and really out there characters and so the show features what you might call the npcs from the games in the form of side characters that all have their own quirks and their own you know crazy thing going on and some of those interactions are really fun as well so there's a good sprinkle of distractions akin to the ones you'd find in the game but the tv show does ultimately focus on sort of the main story it wants to tell and along the way you've got 
the different factions and myriad agendas from all these different factions involved. There are a lot of morally gray areas and motives, which is all in true Fallout fashion. The way all the narrative setup culminates in the final episode that really ties the whole thing together, uh, just really well done. And the show just ends on a really great note where there are enough revelations to wrap up this particular arc, but the door is definitely open for more storytelling in this particular version of Fallout. There's still a lot of unresolved elements, a lot of intrigue that's still left to be fulfilled. And the very end of the show, the final shots, uh, you'll want to stick around for if you're a fan of Fallout. I straight up uh, stood out of my seat. What the show teases for season two has already got me very, very excited indeed. Now, even if you're not a fan of Fallout and are more of like a newcomer to the series or not a gamer, this is a show that I think you'll still be able to enjoy. Fans will get more out of it because, you know, they will understand all of the references. Uh, there's just a sense of familiarity with just how well the world of Fallout is represented. But it is its own story. You don't have to play the games to understand the story of the show. And if anything, I think there's a great introduction for people who have not been introduced to the Fallout universe. Uh, this is a great way to get into Fallout. So yeah, with all said and done, I'd say that the showrunners definitely understood the assignment. I was worried that a Fallout TV show was too ambitious of an undertaking and that uh, the showrunners would not really understand what Fallout is, but it, it feels like a show made by fans for fans that also happens to be a good enough show in its own right that newcomers will come into it not knowing what the game series is and still be able to have a good time with the show. And so hats off to Jonathan Nolan for creating one of the best video game live action adaptations ever. And the fact that with the Fallout show, they managed to create a unique story that stands up there as among the best told Fallout stories. That right there is an achievement within itself. That right there is a more difficult task than sort of beat for beat adapting the storyline that already exists like The Last of Us had to do. So again, just hats off. It's interesting to see sort of Hollywood taking notice of video games and just how creative the, these universes are and how much great narrative you can take from them that highlights that video games have for a long time now been incredible sources of storytelling and it feels like the world is finally beginning to acknowledge that outside of the gaming space. It's just great to see these gaming IPs expand to new audiences. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my take on the Fallout TV show. A pleasant surprise to find just how good this turned out to be. After you check the show out yourself, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on it, whether you enjoyed it as much as I did or whether you were more iffy on it, and explain why in the comments section below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.